Christian and read and study the Word when you're being bombarded, isn't it? It's hard, isn't it? But you've got to stand your ground. We've got to endure to the end. And uh, it's going to get harder and harder for Christians. I see that. Let me give you an example why Noel's day is back. Did you know that? The Bible says you'll know the end times and it'd be like Noel's day, lawlessness and all this stuff that's going on in our world out here, illegal migrations and uh, the Ukraine and, and the gro global food supply and the food chain and all of these things. I'm going to just uh, build a little foundation before I let you know what you are and who you are and what you, you're going to be able to do and are able to do. Amen. But all this stuff is happening. Global erosion of freedom and democracy is the world that we know today. Did y'all know that? And, uh, you know, the current administration is trying to destroy America. I truly believe that. The evil of hell is up there in the White House. It's, uh, we need to tear down the strongholds, and we need to stop it because we as uh, Christians uh, uh, and our schools, the ideology of max max communism is being spread all over our country, y'all. It's a horrible thing. It's been proven to be unsuccessful and to be rebellious against God Almighty. I'm here to tell you right now, and uh, uh, God is an awesome God. Uh, the, the world and, and our country is trying to tear down uh, our religious uh, beliefs, abortion, same-sex marriage. All of those are belittling God and America. Just give you a fine example. I just read in Franklin Graham uh, here about two days ago. I get this magazine. I like him. He's a man of God. and He talked about uh, in Congress they passed the same-sex marriage. Now, what do you think that's going to do to America? Look here. They passed the same-sex marriage law. The halls of Congress, I'm getting this from Franklin, gave their endorsement to an immoral, degenerate lifestyle. Does that go against God? Is that rebellion against God Almighty? Yes, it is. Wake up. And look here. It just happened. It uh, used to be a criminal offense to do that kind of lifestyle. But by God's word, don't change. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we abide by what God says, and we believe what God says. Amen. Now listen. And did you know that uh, during that uh, uh, act to uh, satisfy some of the people that this was going on with, LGBTQ joining uh, uh, the Democrats in a Senate were 12 so-called conservative Republicans. I'm getting this out of Franklin's Magazine. It's really good. They were 12 Republicans. They're supposed to be conservative, okay? They joined their votes with the bill to pass the House, and it passed. And the enemies of hell signed the bill. Now, I don't care what the world says. We're not compromising. This is God's holy word, and you as a believer and a Christian have got to stand up for what it says and, and what, what the principles of God's word. you got to regardless. Because if you don't, you're not... When you compromise and do things that's uh, against God's holy word and, and the churches are belittled, uh, Joyce Myers is preaching this morning, says a lot of churches out there now don't even have God in them. They don't. Now let's go a little bit further out here and look. And, and I want to tell you, uh, folks might not be aware, Disney's making uh, films that's, uh, that's wrong. Y'all need to look at them before you send your children to see these evil films because uh, uh, Disney World is against... Uh, 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 marriage of a man and a woman and the children and the moral standard of the family that's just the bottom line that's just some of the issues that's going on in our world today but i'm not worried about that because i know god's in control amen and i'm excited about what our god is doing what he's going to do but i'm here to tell you who can preach this message coming up here right now that uh, God is an awesome God, but you've got to be prepared and you've got to be ready. And God wants us to know what the devil's doing and his little tricks and his little tactics, okay? Now, I'm going to encourage every one of you right here uh, this morning. I'm going to read these scriptures. Uh, Y'all have heard them before, some of you. Some of you have, some of you ain't. But like here, there, uh, in Ephesians, the Word of God says, let's go back and see if I started in 11. Yeah. Wherefore, take you the whole armor of God that you may abide to withstand in the day and having done all stand 
Well, I tell you right now, you got to take the put. You got to put the full armor of God on. Some of us men in here are military men, and we know what the full armor is. You don't go out there on the battlefield without your weapon and without your armor, because you don't. You're gonna get your head tore up. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you being a Christian, you better get in God's word, and you better study God's word, and you better find out who you are as a Christian, because as soon as you become a Christian, the devil's going to come at you and try to discourage you, tear you down, and get back into that lifestyle that you come out of. The pits of hell. Let's look around here and see. I tell you right now, uh, you got to put on a full on. You got to study the Bible on how to fight spiritually. Warfare. Did you know that? When you become a Christian, you're fighting a spiritual warfare. You are a a uh, a a soldier in the army of God. And I tell you right now, our God has given us every tool we need to defeat the enemy, and his name is Jesus, and this holy word is truth. What is truth? It's his holy word. This is truth, and we got to believe it. Just like our sisters preaching, old Peter stepped out of the boat. Why? He asked God, he said, if you're who you are, step out of the boat. Can I step out of the boat and come to you? Peter stepped out of the boat, and he went to Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus' word is truth, and we got to stand on his word. And I know some of us, sometimes we get slack on some of it, don't we? Because we start looking at what's going on instead of the, 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 the spiritual end of it of what's going on. I tell you right now, we got to stand up and stay. we got to fight the spiritual warfare with Satan and the demons. And how are we going to do that? By the power of Christ Almighty. Amen. I'm telling you right now, when you get up in the morning, you better start getting in God's Word because the enemy's going to try to destroy you and tear you down. In 2023, I think we're going to see some awesome things happening this year and maybe the first of 2024. This or things is happening. Let me make that statement again. Noel's day is back. Look in Matthew 24 and you can talk about it and read about it. God's given us everything that we need to know. Amen. He's given his son Jesus, and that's the most powerful weapon that we have. Greater is he, remember? I learned that a long time ago. Uh, demons of hell can come up against you and do all this stuff. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. My God is greater than any demon of hell. Amen? Let's go a little bit further right here and look. Having done all, stand. You know, when you're in the military, sometimes you got to stand. You might have fought the battle, but you got to stand and keep the ground. Amen? Think about it. I remember one time when I was in Vietnam, it took us three days to take over a mountain that the North Vietnamese uh, legion, I mean, uh, a, a, a legion, I say legions, a battalion had taken over our fire support base. And they come at three or four of us uh, people out in the jungle to get with the first cab and work with them and take that mountain back. Well, let me tell you, I won't even explain some of the horror that went on in some of that. We took that mountain back in three days. Now, the enemy was bedded in our place. But you know, they surrounded us after we took the mountain and got back up on top, and it took us seven days to get back off of it. But we had to stand. If we hadn't stood, we'd have never come back off of it. God is telling you and I, that we got to take mountains and we got to have the power and authority and the armor that we need to be successful and destroy the enemy and his works. What is, the, what is some of the things of the enemy's work? Well, he'll come at your health. He'll come at your finances. He'll come at your family. He'll come at your church. If that don't work, he just rotates it around again. You see, he's been doing it for thousands of years, generation after generation after generation. But we got the power of Almighty God, and He's given us His Word and His truth. He has given us everything in His Holy Word that mankind needs is right here. Did you know that? That's the God we serve. Now let's go a little bit further right here and look uh, in this Scripture. Y'all need to write this Scripture down, and you need to underline it, and you need to be prepared when you're praying in the morning, and all of a sudden the devil's coming at you, he's coming at your finances, or he's coming at you, you're sick, you don't feel good, or your vehicles are tearing down, or something's going on uh, uh, in your family and other things. Uh, you need to get in that Word and say, hey, I see uh, the, the tactic of the devil here where he's working, uh, and I'm going to put on the helmet of salvation. He's going to come at your mind, ain't he? First thing he's going to happen, he's going to come at your mind, ain't he? The first thing, 
So what is a helmet of salvation? What did a, a military man in a military do? We put on a steel pot to protect our mind. And what does a football player put on? He puts on a helmet, doesn't he? Well, you better put on the spiritual helmet of God Almighty because you're a believer and uh, salvation is the helmet uh, of your belief. Amen. Hallelujah in Jesus Christ. Let's go a little bit further and, and just look at some of the, the stuff that God has given us. Uh, stand, therefore, having all your loins girded with truth. Man, you better have your truth ready. Amen. I, I tell you right now, you better be ready. Uh, you know, when I, I some of you guys know what I'm talking about. When I went into uh, Vietnam, they sent me off to jungle training uh, for stuff that uh, you can't imagine uh, in case something happened and I got out there by myself. I had to know how to defend and fight and battle. You as a Christian... God has showed you how to fight, defend, and battle right here. And you better start preparing and getting in God's Word and studying because you're going to need this armor because the enemy's going to come at you. Don't think you're immune. You're not. And just because you got sick, that don't mean your faith is lower than anybody else's. It happens in humanity. It rains on the righteous and the unrighteous, does it not? Amen? Why? Because of the curse that's on this land. Think about it. Let's look a little bit uh, further back. I love this. Uh, uh, first time I preached this message, part of this message was in uh, Wales, Scotland, somewhere. Where I preached to some guys that were on a halfway house fixing to go back out into the world. And I preached it to them and let them know that they're going back out into the world and the enemy will try to tear them down. They'll be right back where they come from. Unless you get a hold of God. And God's telling us today, you better get a hold of him and be prepared and be ready. He's telling us that we have a duty, praise God, to stand for the Lord and know your enemy regarding Satan, who you, 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 your enemy is. I'll tell you right now, before they dropped me off in the jungle for ten and a half months out there, I knew who the enemy was. I knew how his tactics was. I knew how he worked, and I was prepared for that. You better be prepared as a Christian to fight the enemy because you are in a spiritual warfare that you can't imagine. But don't let that frighten you. Greater is he that's in us. Uh, we're more than conquerors through Christ. But you've got to learn who you are. And when you learn who you are, Satan is afraid of you. Satan will send all he's got to our generals, won't he? It's out there on the front line. Think about it. Our folks are fixing to be on the front line on that missionary field, but they're going to be more than conquerors. When they step on that island off of that airplane, they will take the ground that they walk upon because they're coming and ordained to God Almighty. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Did you know what one of Paul's missions was to preach the gospel? He went through all kind of stuff. Shipwreck. They beat him. They tried to kill him, stone him to death, do all kind of things to him. What his, one of his great missions was, and he liked doing, he loved to go preach the gospel in areas around the Mediterranean that had never heard of Jesus. He didn't want to go to a church. I mean, he, he would go to churches and help build them and get them going and everything, but it's already know about Jesus. He liked to go to those places who didn't know about Jesus. Think about it. So you and I have responsibility and accountability, amen. You and I have responsibility and accountability to help and stand with all the people, amen. They're trying to follow God. Lift our brothers and sisters up uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Let's look around. Stand, therefore, having your loins girded with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, okay. Now, what is that breastplate of righteousness? It means you're right standing before God Almighty. It means you're not unrighteous anymore. You're righteous, and you can speak with authority because uh, your righteousness is of our God Almighty. That's the word he is. Amen? Think about it. 
Well, they gave me a flight jacket. It's supposed to help me, and I didn't weigh but 150 pounds. I couldn't tote that joke around. I had to throw it off. I had to throw half my food away. I couldn't tote it off. You know what I mean? But I'll tell you right now, I got the breastplate of righteousness on now. You know why? I can tote it. Because God gave it to me. What does it say right there? It says, Stand therefore having your loins girded with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness. That's a shield for what? They're going to be fiery darts thrown at you from every direction you can imagine. But if you got that shield of righteousness up there, I'm telling you right now, you'll stop them fiery darts. Okay? Because you got your armor on. Think about it. And your feet sodded with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Everywhere you walk around, you're carrying that gospel and the word of peace. You're ready. Let's go a little bit further right there. Look at here. And above all, taking the shield of faith. Now, you got the breastplate on. The shield is this way, faith. What is your faith? You believe what God told you? Do you believe that you put on the full armor of God and, and defeat the enemy because you fight against uh, not uh, uh, the principalities, you fighting against uh, spiritual warfare? you got to fight it with spiritual warfare. Now, how are you going to know that unless you get into God's Word and find out about it? Amen? You better get some of these scriptures down and be ready because he's going to come at you. Let me tell you, I, I remember when when, when I first got delivered and I got on the Pentecostal move tongue speaking preacher, hallelujah, I give God the glory. I'm telling you right now. I got a hold of God, man, and God healed me of cancer. and I, I had went to deliverance and, and God uh, healed me of ulcers. I hadn't eat, couldn't eat, and lost 25 pounds. And, and uh, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And my brother Roy told me, said, and Rick said, about it might happen in a week or two days a month the satan's gonna come back to you and tell you that didn't happen well i'm here to tell you about three months man i was on fire i was speaking in tongues i was praising god and i knew who i was already i knew i'd got something from god i didn't have and i knew i got man i was riding down the road going to work and i had my little sunglasses on i'd pray to god sometimes and cry through the sunglasses if i couldn't see him <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm running down through there, going to work up, up there in Spark Bird. Boy, I'm just a bugging down there. The devil speaks to me and said, you didn't get baptized in the Holy Ghost and you didn't get healed. And I said, uh, Satan, you are alive from hell. And I started hit the mushroom of my maha like a shonda hayabaya. I started speaking in tongues and guess what? Satan left me and ain't never come back and tried to pull that on me again. But what do you think had happened if I'd have said, you know, you know, that very night I, I, I lost 25 pounds. I had ulcers. I couldn't eat nothing. That very night I went out and eat pizza because I was healed. The very night I got healed, I went and ate pizza. What, what do you think would have happened if I'd have said, well, my stomach does hurt and this don't feel right here. And I, the devil would put it back on you. I'm here to tell you right now, Christian, you've got a healing or something from God Almighty. You hold on to it. It's yours. You hold on to it. You don't let the devil take it back from you. I love pizza, by the way, now. <laughs> Praise God. He, God radically changed my life when he baptized me in the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all know a little bit of my, my testimony, but let's go a little bit further right here and look and, and, and see what God says. And take the helmet of salvation. Mm. And the sword of the Spirit, uh, which is what? The Word of God. When I was in Vietnam, I, oh, I had a little New Testament in the back of my pack back here in a waterproof ammo pouch. But I wasn't living what I should have been living until I got in that foxhole and cried out to God and I was fixing to die. But I'm here to tell you right now, when they sent me out there in the jungles, I strapped on 21 bandoliers of M16 ammunition. I got my M16. 
I got a rocket launcher, 3.12, that went in my root sack. I had frag grenades stuck all over my root sack. I was loaded when I went. And I had my weapon. But I'm here to tell you this morning, right here's your weapon. Y'all see it? Ain't no weapons of this world will never come against this weapon. It won't be defeated. Y'all got that? Here is your weapon. Don't go into warfare without your weapon. Think about it. I can give you some examples. Let's go a little bit further. Look at and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, has God showed you how to prepare for your spiritual warfare and battle that you're going to do and already do it? Some of you seasoned Christians already know what I'm talking about. Some of you new Christians are getting beat up a little bit because you're learning. That's okay. God said he'll never forsake you. He'll be there, and he'll show you in his word. Amen? And you ask the Holy Ghost, he'll teach you all things. Let's go a little bit further right here. And look in God's holy word. You know, no Satan's devices. Now let's go to this next scripture right here, 18. Praying always with uh, all prayer and supplications of the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. Now I want to tell you something. You got to pray. We get busy sometimes. But you can be out there working on your car, riding a lawnmower, or doing uh, uh, the laundry or whatever. You can be talking to God, conversation, just like uh, I'm, me and my wife talking to something. You know, you can be talking to the Lord. Uh, you don't have to be in a position that's, you know, you can talk to God anytime. Isn't that nice to know that you can do that? That's awesome, isn't it? Let's go a little bit further right here and look. Now, I won't, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, we need to know Satan's devices. Look right here. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So God is showing us some of the things that he does and comes against God's people. Y'all see that? And did you see the, the warfare uh, armor that God has given us to defeat the enemy. You need to find out. If you got something going on, you know, it might dawn on you and say, you know, I, I'll tell you right now, I think every sickness and demon of hell is demons. It's germ. You, what do you think a germ is? It's a demon. Now, you know, the flesh has things to do with certain things because the flesh is weak and the flesh is evil. But I'm hearing you right now. There's a curse in this land. And the Bible said they're going to be pestilence and all that stuff's going on, isn't it? But that's okay. Christians, are going to, they might have to go through it, but God's with us. He'll bring us through it. If he don't, it's going to be gain for us, isn't it? It's going to be gain. Let's go a little further right here and look and see. And uh, uh, give, give, give the devil no place. Now, now, now listen to this. Neither give place to the devil. What did we say about putting the hell of salvation on? Now, let me ask you this. Does the devil come at you about something that happened two or three weeks ago or a year ago and say, yeah, man, I remember that. I hate that, and I'm still dwelling on that. Who is that? Who do you think that is? You think that's God? Did God tell you to put it under the blood and move on? Did he? It's under the blood. You're supposed to move on. Hallelujah. But I'll tell you this. Continually, the enemy's going to bombard your mind about something. And if you start dwelling on it and thinking on it, look out. You're going to get in trouble. So how do, you, how do you defeat the enemy? When an evil imagination comes to my mind, I say, I praise God. I worship God. His name is Jesus. I claim the blood. Start singing. I claim the blood. Jesus shed on Calvary. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the enemy's gone. But don't worry. He'll come back. But you know how to fix him now, don't you? You better not be dwelling on that stuff. You better get rid of it quickly when in imaginations that you know is not of God and holy, you get rid of them. Move them out. Amen? 
Neither give place to the devil because you give him a little place, he'll just move right on back in, won't he? Oh, man. Look at here. Uh, submit yourselves, therefore, to God and resist the devil. He'll flee from you. I use this scripture all the time. The devil comes at me about certain things, and I see it, and I recognize it. I say, Lord, I submit to you this day. And, Lord, I'm resisting devils and demons of hell coming at me this way, this way, this way. I command them to go in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, I'll be messing around. All of a sudden, I'll, I'll feel the peace and release of it. Amen? I know sometimes you have to go back and fight a few more times, but it's, the Bible says do what God said to do, and he said to stand, didn't he? Did he, say, did he not say stand? Resist the devil. Submit to God. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. God, I submit to you this day, and I put on the full armor of God, and I resist the devil coming at me, my family, my home, anything pertaining to me in Jesus' name. That should be some of your warfare when you get up in the morning before you go out into your job or wherever you're going. You better be loaded. Amen? You better be ready. Let's go a little bit further right here and look and uh, give him no place. Resist him. Resist steadfast. The Word of God says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Now, you think he's going to jump on a seasoned Christian that's, that's grounded in the faith and got the Word of God and, and got the armor of God on versus uh, one over here that's not reading God's Word this morning or yesterday or this week and done got weak in the Word a little bit and getting very vulnerable for the enemy to attack. Which one do you think he would attack? Because if you're a child of God and you got the full armor of God on and you're praying and doing what you're supposed to do, you're ready for him. He knows there's going to be a fight. Think about it. Y'all see it? Look at here. Be sober, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil. When you become a Christian, the devil immediately comes and tries to tear you down and destroy you. Because he don't want you to learn how to get the weapons of spiritual warfare, okay? Think about it. Ooh, I like it. Let's go a little bit further right here. Overcome. Let's, let's, let's look at a good example. Feels good to be in the house of God today, don't it? Let's look at somebody give us a good example of the word and how to fight the enemy. Why, he was deity. He was God Almighty. He was Emmanuel. He was God with us. Let's see what Jesus done. First, I want to read this. Whom resist steadfast in the truth, knowing that the same afflictions are are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now, you got to be steadfast, y'all, but let's look right here and get us a good example. His name is Jesus. He went down to the Jordan River. John the Baptist baptizing him. The, the Holy Ghost descended on him like a dove, and immediately after he come up out of that water, he went up into the wilderness to do what? To fast 40 days and 40 nights. And do you think the devil come at him at a, when he was this started and had he, he's okay. No, the devil come with him when he was down in the valley, I would think, wouldn't you? He hadn't eaten for 40 days, and he was hungry, and he was weak, and he was undernourished, and he was in a position, and look what happened. And then uh, was Jesus led up in the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He's led up there to be tempted of the devil. If you've been tempted of the devil and you fail, you get back on your knees and you ask God to forgive you, you get back on it. Look at here. And when he had fasted 40 days, now he done fasted 40 days and nights, he was actual, he was a hungry. He was hungry. He had fasted for, man, can you imagine? Look at here. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Now, if you was God Almighty and you was deity, Man, it'd be pretty easy to come up with a Five Guys cheeseburger, wouldn't it? Huh? That's temptation, ain't Gary? I could use one of them now. <laughs> Excuse me. But I want to tell you, 
he was tempted. Jesus could have turned the stone into bread. You talk about great temptation. You get out there and you fast for about 24 hours or two or three days and see if it don't make the flesh hurt. Okay? What is it? Think about it. Make the flesh hurt, won't it? Look right here. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Well, he was the Son of God, and he could do it. But the devil was tempting him. And look what Jesus done. But he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. How did Jesus fight the devil in the wilderness? He said, it is written. He fought him with the word, didn't he? Now, this, you know, so, so he was tempted and he, and he passed that one, didn't he? So what's the devil going to do now? Then the devil take him up into a holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, uh, He shall give uh, his angels a charge concerning thee, and if thy hands uh, they shall bear thee up, uh, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Boy, he was tempted again, wasn't he? Said, if you God throw yourself down, you won't, you know they're gonna they're gonna protect you. Boy, he was tempted again, wasn't he? Now he was tempted about the bread, and here he is tempted again. If you God, now think about it. Good thing man ain't in that that that, that position, cause man's got an ego and a pride. So he'd boat right up, wouldn't he? Say, yeah, man, watch this. Praise God, it was Jesus. Hallelujah. Look right here, y'all. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. What did he tell him? The word said, Don't tempt the Lord thy God. It's God's word. He defeated that temptation with the word, didn't he? And so the devil, he ain't quitting, is he? He's going to try something else, ain't he? Look right here. Again, the devil taking him up into exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Now, that's a pretty heavy one there, ain't it? All the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Now, look what that lying father of lies, Satan, said. And he says to him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Well, if Jesus fell down and worshipped the devil, you think the devil would give him all of that? The devil's a liar, ain't he? But see, Satan was coming at God Almighty, the Holy One, Emmanuel. Look at right here. Christ already owned all of that. Look at what our Lord said. Then saith Jesus to him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, What? It is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Is Jesus given us an example? Yes, he has. Look here. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. You ever been there? I've, I've been through some things, and, I, and, and I, I tell you, I went through some horrible things before in my life, and I'm, I'm ready to be with the Lord. But I, I remember years ago, I was baptized in the Holy Ghost and on fire for the Lord, and the devil literally came and tried to push me out of my bed into hell. I felt his hands on my shoulder, but I called out in the name of Jesus, help me, Lord. And I was going through something else during that time, and I had uh, got a hold of God and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and, man, I had been through a spiritual warfare that... I needed more strength, but I went through it. And you know, God, at 3 o'clock in the morning, outside of my bedroom window, sent birds that whispered and sang all night long and ministered to me. See, God sent angels. He's with you. He was with Jesus, wasn't he? Amen. Y'all see? Y'all see? How did our Lord fight the enemy? 
with the word, y'all. You're not going to fight him with, I'll tell you this is a good example. Demon-possessed man comes up here, and I go down and I say, come out. In the name of, come out. Think that demon's coming out? I ain't going to put nobody's name up. Think that demon come out? No, he ain't going to come out. But if I go down there and I say, with the power of God that's in me, and I say, you come out in the holy name of Jesus, there's power and authority in that name. And you got it. You got it. Amen? How you doing? By the blood right here and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of testimony that they loved not their lives unto death how do you overcome satan by the blood of the lamb that's how now let's go a little bit further right here this is good stuff this is wonderful stuff some more strength for you okay y'all write this down the word of god says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You got Jesus in your heart? You under his shadow. Look right here. And I say, and I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. 2023, is he your fortress? Is he your refuge? Are you going to trust him in 2023? Because you ain't got nobody else if you want the victory in your life. I'll tell you, the world has no hope. The demons of hell are running about doing everything that they can do because they know the time is short. Look at here. I say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He's the one I run to. Uh, he's my fortress. He, my, man, you're talking about a fort. Whew. And uh, he's my God. And I trust him. And I trust what? His word. He gave you his word. Trust his word. Obey his commandments, trust his word. How are you going to know what he, what's yours until you get in and study it and read it and, uh, and know it? Amen? you got some accountability and responsibility as a saint that you've got to do regarding Satan and the enemy stuff that he's coming at you with. You better be ready. You think you can uh, uh, love him today and not get in his word and praise him and worship him the rest of this week and come back Sunday, you okay? You better look out. You're going to get in bad problems. You better be loaded every day. Look right here. Surely he will, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the nuisance of pestilence. You say pestilence running around there everywhere? Yes, say, oh, I praise God. He delivered me twice from them evil things. Okay. He's an awesome God and he loves us. Look at here. He shall cover thee with the feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth. I tell you, you ever have, I used to have chickens. I might have told you all this. You used to have chicken, boy. Them chickens would have little chicks, man, and there'd be a big thundercloud come out. It's going to rain. Them little chicks be out there in the chicken yard pecking around with their mama, and it's going to rain. All of a sudden, that old mama would say, whoop. You throw them wings up like that, and all them chickens will get under them wings. Man, they stick their little head out and check it out. I'm good in this place. It's my mama. Okay? Well, I'm telling you here uh, this morning, we can get under the wings of God Almighty, and he'll protect us, and we can look out and say, we got God. Amen, sister. We got God. Amen? That's who we serve. Look right here. You need to write this down. You need to read this every now and then. Me, me and Becky read this. I was in the hospital for eight weeks when I was in that auto accident. We read this and prayed this every day. I'm not in a wheelchair either. Look right here. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. It don't matter what's going on. Don't be afraid. God's with you. Don't be afraid. Look here what the word says. Nor by the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noontime. You know, I don't care if they doomsday, I mean, doomsday or 
nuke or whatever happened, I'm, I'm going to be with the Lord regardless. Amen. We're going to be with God, but we're going to enjoy ourselves and be and do the work God wants us to do while we're here to help win others to Christ and let them have that security that they're not scared and afraid of all this stuff going on because God has a plan for humanity if they want it. Amen. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eye shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Them people that's doing wicked and everything they think they're getting away with, they not. They're coming a day. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Here's your habitation. Stay with God in 2023. Stay under his wings and stay under his holy word and put on the armor because the warfare is greater than I've ever seen it. But that's okay. We're going to get it. We done got it. Victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Look here. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh in thy dwelling. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Uh, thou shalt bear thee up with thy, their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, young lion and the dragon. Thou shalt trample under your feet. Is that Satan and his little demons? Are you trampling the devil of hell under your feet? God said to do it. Get used to it. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He's given you his love. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. You're going to get in trouble here and there, but you've got to walk the walk and talk the talk. Stand with God. Look at here. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation God's an awesome God what are we supposed to do we're supposed to trust God ain't we we're supposed to put on the full armor of God we're supposed to do what he wants us to do we got to continue the fight with him you in don't bail out stand with him because you're going to be victorious you bail out in 2023, you're going to lose. <laughs> because he could come back at a twinkle of an eye. That's how close our Lord is. I truly believe that. And we got to be ready, y'all. We got to be ready. Have you committed yourself to the Lord in 2023 like never before? Do you want to be closer to the Lord in 2023 than you was in 2022? Do you want to read and study his word? Do you want to commit and dedicate yourself to the Lord thy God to obey and honor him and trust him and follow him? And then you can get under the, the, the almighty's wings. Amen. This is what you got to do to your enemy. Your power and strength to do it. You must be ready. 
you must be ready. Every head bowed, please. I pray for those folks on the internet. I thank you for being with us. I pray you got a hold of this word of God and it will help you to defeat the enemy in 2023 like never before. Put 10,000 to run in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You're an awesome God we serve, Lord. I pray you'll just give us strength like we never had before. I pray in the name of Jesus you'll give us a, a, a greater anointing in 23 than we can imagine because you're the one that we give the glory to. Everything's accomplished to glorify you and the Father. And we want to worship you. I pray in the holy name of Jesus that everybody that's represented in here uh, this day will receive an extra, extra, extra anointing of your power to defeat uh, and destroy the enemy that's coming against their homes, their families, their jobs, their health, whatever it might be, finances, whatever it might be. I ask it, God, in Jesus' name. And I ask God in Jesus' name, if there's anybody here this morning that, or the day that does not know you as Lord and Savior, and you want to be saved, raise your hand right now. I'm going to pray for you. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Be honest with yourself. Anybody want to rededicate their life because you know you haven't been leaving the way you should. If you want to rededicate your life, just raise your hand. I'll pray for you right where you're at. Anywhere. I want this prayer. Every head bowed. I'm going to ask you another question. We're not doing this for gain, but I want all the benefits that God has, don't you? You want God to help you spiritually this year like never before. You want God to help you physical health like never before. And you want to manage your finances that God gives you like never before, and you want him to pour a blessing on it that will sustain the needs that you have. Raise up your pocketbook or your billfold right now. Every head bowed. Every head bowed. These are benefits of God Almighty. You know what I'm saying? These are benefits of God Almighty. He wants to meet your needs. Every head bowed. Father, I pray right now that you will abundantly and overfill everyone that's represented here holding up their finances to you, God, as we honor you with our tithes and do what we're supposed to do, that you'll supply every need that we need in the holy name of Jesus. It's yours, and you can give it to your saints to glorify and magnify you and to help other people and to do things to keep your work going forward. I pray, God, in Jesus' name, physically. I take authority right now physically over the demons of hell that's been coming at our people, the sickness. I, I rebuke those, uh, of those plagues and flus and COVID and all those uh, uh, pestilence that's been coming at our, our body of Christ. I command it in Jesus' name, them demons of hell, to go from this uh, uh, community in the holy name of Jesus. God, just let us be lights in the community to glorify and magnify you. Let us uh, love our brothers and sisters like never before. You know every need. You know every spiritual need. You know every physical need. You know what's going on in our bodies. And God, until you through with us, God, we're going to stand and we're going to walk forward to glorify and magnify you. I pray in 2023 we're going to be more powerful spiritually with you than ever before. And you're going to demonstrate your power uh, through every message to glorify and magnify you. And to lift you up, oh God. Confirm your word. Pour your love out on everyone here. Pour your blessings out on everyone here in 2023 like we can't imagine this year. And protect over everyone represented here. I apply the blood of Jesus over everyone that's represented in here in the holy name of Jesus. And I put a hedge around everybody in the name of Jesus. He's our protector. Everybody said amen and amen. God bless you. I pray that come back tonight. We got some good word tonight. It's going to be good too. Amen.
The word's always good. Thank you all for being here. God bless you. Love you. Thank you for being here. Come back tonight. It's 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Come back tonight, 6 o'clock. We're going to have some more good stuff uh, 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 the Lord has uh, laid on my heart to minister to his people with. Love you, I love you too, man. God bless you, boy. I know you do. I'll see you on you. Praise God. Amen.